Hallelujah. In case you didn't know, today's Armed Forces Day, and we have at least two in our congregation that are currently serving, so nice. additionally be thankful for that. Hallelujah. Amen. T- uh, turn your sitter to page 14, Tehla 100. Mismor la Torah. How are you, la Yahweh, kol ha'aretz? If do et Yahweh besimcha, bo'u lefana birnana, deu ki Yahweh, hu Elohim, hu asanu, velo anachnu, amo vatzon marito, bo'u shevara betoda, chatzerata bitila, hodu lo, barku shmo, kitov Yahweh, leolam chazdo, veador vador imunato. A tehila of thanksgiving. Shout unto Yahweh, all the earth. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that Yahweh is Elohim. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the flock of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For Yahweh is good. His mercy endures forever and his faithfulness throughout all generations. Amen. Victory resound in the tent of the righteous of the Lord. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tent of the righteous of the Lord. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. Yes. 
gas is on, he Maya Yeshua, Yeshu Maya gas is on, he Maya Yeshua, my 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 oh my gas is on, my 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 oh my gas is on, hey 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 hey, my 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 gas is on, my 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 gas is on.
this holy city. Kings and nations will be drawn into your light with the brightness of your rising. What, what an, an awesome, awesome sight. sight. Lift your eyes and see the people's coming from afar. Just take, take a, a look, look around you. What a joy will fill your heart. Joy will fill your heart. Yeah. 
Chora Yawa. Turn your Siddharim to page 15, Justification. Rashid Chachma Yirat Yawa, Sechel Tov Lakola Sechem, Tehilato Omenid Laad, Vahu Rahum Ya Per Avo, Velo Yashit Virba La Shiva Po, Velo Yair Kol Hamato. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do thereafter. His praise endures forever. And he, being merciful, forgives iniquity and does not destroy. Frequently he turns away his anger and does not stir up all his wrath. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not do the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Sanctification. Kadesh otam ba'amatecha devarecha emet. Bechol libi darashtecha al tashgeni mimitzvotecha. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not err from your commandments. Bayahulu. Bayahulu hashemaim vecha'aretz vechal tzeva'am. Vechal Elohim bayom hashvi'i. Malakto asher asa. Vayishbot bayom hashvi'i. Michal malakto asher asa. Vayevarek Elohim et yom hashvi'i. Vayekadesh oto. Kivo Shavat Mechal Malakto Asher Bara Elohim Laasot. And the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day Elohim finished his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because that in it he rested from all his work which Elohim in creating had made. Veshamru. Veshamru v'nei Yisrael et hashabat, la'asot et hashabat ledor tam brit olam. V'nei uvein b'nei Yisrael ot hi le'olam, ki sheshet yamim asa yawa et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. Uvayom hashvi'i shavat v'ainafash. And the children of Yisrael shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Yisrael forever. That in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he ceased from work and rested. Please stand for Matobu. Matobu, O Halecha Yaakov. Mishkenotecha Yisrael Vani berov chazdecha avovetecha Eshtakave el hecha chadshecha Biratecha Yahuwah Ahavti meon betecha Um kom mishkan kvodecha Vani Eshtak have vekra Evre khalifne Yahwa osi Vani tefilati lecha Yahwa et ratzon Elohim Berav chaz decha, ane bimemet yishecha. How lovely are your tents, O Yaakov, your dwelling places, O Yisrael, and I in your abundant kindness, I will enter your house, 
I will prostrate myself toward your holy sanctuary in awe of you. Yahweh, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory resides. I will prostrate myself and bow down and worship. I will kneel before Yahweh, my maker. And as for me, Yahweh, let my prayer come to you at an acceptable time. In your great mercy, Elohim, answer me with the truth of your salvation. Amen. Barhu et Yahweh Hamivorak, Baruch Yahweh Hamivorak Leolam Vaed. You may be seated. Page 27, Tehillah 145. Tehillah le David. Amromecha Elohai Hamelech, Veavarecha Simcha Leolam Vaed. Bechal Yom Avarechecha. Vehalela simcha leolam vaed. Gadol yawa um halal meod. Vigdulato ein kecher. Dor le dor. Yeshabach measecha ugverotecha yagidu. Page 29. Praise of David. I will extol you, Elohai, O king, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you. And I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is Yahweh, and highly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another and declare your mighty acts. The glorious splendor of your majesty and your wondrous works will I rehearse. And men shall speak of the might of your tremendous acts. And I will tell of your greatness. They shall utter the fame of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. Yahweh is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Yahweh is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Yahweh, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your might, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glory of the majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages. And your dominion endures throughout all generations. Yahweh upholds all that fall and raises up all those that are bowed down. The eyes of all wait for you, and you give them food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy every living thing with favor. Yahweh is righteous in all his ways and gracious in all his works. Yahweh is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Yahweh preserves all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of Yahweh and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Page 350, Tehillah 105. Get comfortable. Oh, give thanks unto Yahweh, call upon his name, make known his doings among the peoples, sing unto him, sing praises unto him, speak of all his marvelous works, glory in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek Yahweh, seek Yahweh and his strength, seek his face continually, remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Oh, you seed of Abraham, his servant. You children of Yaakov, his chosen ones. He is Yahweh, Eloheinu. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which he made with Avraham and his oath unto Yitzhak. And he established it unto Yaakov for a statute, to Yisrael for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto you will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When they were but a few men in number, yes, very few, and sojourners in it. And when they went about from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yes, for their sake he reproved kings. Touch not my anointed ones, and do, not, do my prophets no harm. And he called a famine upon the land, and broke the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them. Yosef was sold for a servant. His feet they hurt with fetters. His soul was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of Yahweh tested him. The king sent and loosed him. 
even the ruler of the peoples, and set him free. He made his, him master of his house and ruler of all his possessions, to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. Yisrael also came into Mitzrayim, and Yaakov sojourned in the land of Ham, and he increased his people greatly and made them too mighty for their adversaries. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent Moshe his servant and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They wrought among them his manifold signs and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness, and it was dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land swarmed with frogs in the chambers of their kings. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats in all their borders. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also and their fig trees and broke the trees of their borders. He spoke, and the locusts came, and the canker worm without number, and did eat up every herb in their land, and de did eat up the fruit of their ground. He smote all the firstborn in their land, the firstfruits of all their strength. And he brought them forth with silver and gold, and there was none that stumbled among his tribes. Mitzrayim was glad when they departed, for the fear of them had fallen upon them. He spread a cloud for a shade, and fire to give light in the night. They asked, and he brought quails, and gave them in plenty bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and waters gushed out. They ran a river in dry places, for he remembered his holy word unto Avram his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy, his chosen ones with singing, and he gave them the lands of the nations, and they took the labor of the peoples in possession, that they might keep his statutes, and observe his laws. Hallelujah. Page 37, please stand. I will die. Retzei Yahweh Eloheinu be'amecha Yisrael vetli filtam ve'hashev et ha'avodah lidvir betecha. Yisei Yisrael ut filtam mere. Ba Ava Tekabel Baratzon Utehi Leratzon Tamid Avodat Yisrael Amecha Vetezena Enenu Beshuvcha Letzion Berachamim Barukata Yawa Hamachzir Shekinato Letzion Be favorable Yawa our Elohim toward your people Yisrael and their prayer and restore the most holy service of your house. Accept in love the offerings and prayers of Yisrael. And may the service of your people, Yisrael, always be favorable to you. May our eyes behold your return to Zion in mercy. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, who restores his presence to Zion. Amen. You may be seated. Turn to page 42. Ein Kael. Ein Kael Yishrun Rokev Shemaim Bezrecha. Uvga Avoto Shechakim. Page 43. There is none like the Elohim of Yeshurun riding through the heavens to help you, riding on the clouds, clouds in his majesty. The Elohim of old is a dwelling place with everlasting arms beneath. He expelled the enemy before you and said, Destroy. She, so Yisrael lives in security. The fountain of Yaakov is alone in a grand of land of grain and new wine, where the skies drip with dew. Happy are you, Yisrael, who is like you, a people saved by Yahweh, your defender helping you and your sword of triumph. Your enemies will cringe before you, but you will trample, trample down their high places. Page 55. Mashiach HaEved HaYehudim. Baomer ani she Yeshua Hamashiach sheret et hamila leman emet ha Elohim kide lechem et havataha asher laavot. For I say that Yeshua Hamashiach ministered to the Jews for the sake of the truth of Elohim, in order to confirm the promise to the fathers, and in order to show His mercy by causing the Gentiles to glorify Elohim as it is written in the Tanakh. Because of this, I will acknowledge you among the Gentiles and sing praise to your name. 
And again it says, Gentiles rejoice with his people. And again, praise Yahweh, all Gentiles. Let all peoples praise him. And again, Yeshiahu says, the root of Yeshai will come. He who arises to rule Gentiles. Gentiles will put their hope in him. May Elohim, the source of hope, fill you completely with joy and shalom as you continue trusting, so that by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, you may overflow with hope. Amen. Please stand and face the Torah, Yeshua, page 58. Baruch Atah Yahweh Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Ed Derek HaYeshua BeMashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. He walked among us, filled with the Ruach, the only one who ever fulfilled your Torah. He healed the sick and raised the dead. The multitudes of the people sought his touch. He taught as no man taught. With authority he brought forth the treasures of the Torah. How the children sought him, the lepers he touched and made clean. How the despised and outcasts found love and release from their sin. How the hypocrites feared him, whose words uncovered their sin. Despised and rejected, acquainted with grief, he bore the sins of Israel. All we like sheep have gone astray, turned everyone to his own way. Our iniquities were laid upon the king, the sins of the world, his burden to bear. He rose from the dead and opened the way to life everlasting. Praise his name. We are in him. His ruach empowers. New life is ours with joy and peace. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, king of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua, our king. Baruch Atah Yahweh, Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lano, Mashiach Yeshua, Mal Kenu. Page 59. Ein kam ocho Elohim, Yahweh, ein kam achasecha, machutecha malchut kol olamim, o mem shalatecha vecha dor vador, Yahweh melech, Yahweh melach, Yahweh imloch leolam vayed, Yahweh oz leamor, iten Yahweh berekat lemo vashalom. There is none like you among the gods, Yahweh. There is nothing that compares to your deeds. Your kingdom is a kingdom that endures for all eternity, and your sovereignty extends throughout all generations. Yahweh reigns. Yahweh has reigned. Yahweh will reign throughout eternity. Yahweh will bless his people with peace. Av harakamim hativa v'tzinecha etzion, tivnei chamot Yerushalayim, ki v'chal leval batachnu melech al ram varisa adon olamim. Father of compassion, deal kindly with Zion according to your will. We build the walls of Yerushalayim, for we trust in you alone, O King, revered and honored Elohim, master over the entire universe. Vayahi bin Soa, Rom, Vayomer, Moshe, Kumma, Yehua, Vefutsu, Oivecha, Venusu, Mesenecha, Mipenecha, Kimitzion, Tetze Torah, Urvar, Yehua, Merushalayim. Baruch Shanatan Torah Leamor Israel Bigdushata. When the ark went forward, Moshe would say, Arise, O Yahweh, let your enemies be scattered. Let those who hate you flee from before you, for from Zion shall go forth the Torah, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who in holiness gave the Torah to his people, Israel. Kimitzion Tetze Torah. Ki mitzion tetze Torah Udevar awa mi Yerushalayim Baruch shenatan Torah Torah Baruch shenatan Torah Torah Le'amor 
Israel, Bigdushato. our children.
Page 427. Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Ve'ahavta et Yahweh Elohecha, בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מיודך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצבך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודברת בם בשבתך בפפתך ובלבתך ודרך ושכפכך ובחמך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך והיו לטטפות בין עניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך ואהבת לרעך כמוך. Hear O Israel, Yehua is our Elohim, Yehua is one. And you are to love Yehua, your Elohim, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. These words which I command you today are to be upon your heart. You are to teach them carefully to your children. You are to talk about them when you sit at home, when you're traveling on the road, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall tie them onto your hand. They should be frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Page 61. אחד אלוהינו, גדול אדוננו, קדוש שמו, גדלו ליהו הייתי, ונרמם השמו יחדיו, מי כמוך בעלים יהוע, מי כמוך נעדר בקודש. נורא תהילות הוסף אלה. Our Elohim is one, great is our Adon, holy is his name. Exact the Awa with me, let us extol his name together. Who is like you among the gods, O Yehua? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in praises, doing wonders. Amen. מי שברך אבותינו אברהם ויצחק ויעקב הוא יברך את מיכאל שעלה לכפור המקום ולכפור התורה הקדוש ברוך הוא ישמרכו ויצלחו מכל זרה וצוחה ומכל נגע ומחלה וישלח ברכה וצלחה בחל מעשה ידיו אמן. May he who blessed our fathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob May he bless Mike who has come up to honor this place and to honor the Torah May the Holy One bless him, protect him and deliver him from all tribulation and oppression and from every plague and illness, and may he send blessing and prosperity on all the works of his hands. Amen. Baruch et Yehoah HaMevorach Baruch Yehoah HaMevorach Le'olam Vayed Baruch Ata Yehoah Eloheinu Melech HaOlam אשר בר חר בנו מכהמים, ונתן לנו את תורתו, ברוך אתה יהוה, נותן התורה. אמן. Twenty-three or twenty-six, three, three, six. If you walk in my kukot and keep my meats boat and do them, then I will give your rains in their season, and the land shall yield her produce, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach under the vintage, and the vintage shall reach under the sowing time. 
and you shall eat your bread until you have enough and dwell in your land safely. And I will give shalom in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will cause evil beasts to seize out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. Baruch Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah temet, vechae olam nota betocheinu. Baruch ata Yehua, noten ha Torah. Amen. Blessed are you, O Yehua, our Elohim, King of the universe, who selected good prophets, delighting in their words which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, O Yehua, who chose the Torah. Your servant Moshe, your people Israel, and the prophets of truth and righteousness. Haftarwar portion, Yirmiyahu 17, 5 through 8. Thus says Yahweh, Cursed is the man that trusts in man, and makes flesh his arm, and whose heart departs from Yahweh. For he shall be like a tamarisk in the desert, and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, a salt land, and not inhabit it. Blessed is the man that trusts in Yahweh, and whose trust Yahweh is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, that spreads out its roots by the river, and shall not see when heat comes, but its foliage shall be luxuriant, and shall not be anxious in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Blessed, Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, Rock of all ages, righteous throughout all generations. You are the faithful God, promising and then performing, first speaking and then fulfilling, for all your words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, and faithful are your words, for no word of yours shall remain unfulfilled. You are a faithful and merciful Elohim and King. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, who are faithful in fulfilling all your words. Have mercy on Zion, it is a fountain of our life, and very soon deliver her who grieves deeply. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, who makes Zion rejoice with her children. Make us joyful, O Yahweh, our Elohim, with the prophet Eliyahu, your servant, and with the kingdom of the house of David, your anointed. May Yahu come soon and bring joy to our hearts. Allow no stranger to sit on David's throne or inherit his glory, for by your holy name you swore to him that his light would not be quenched forever. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, the shield of David. Baruch ata Yahweh, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Mashiach Yeshua, v'haravarim shabrika chadasha. Baruch ata Yahweh, noten brika chadasha. Amen. The brika chadasha portion is Luca. 15 verses 1 through 7. Then the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him, and the Sophrim and Pershim murmured, saying, He receives even the sinners and eats with them. So Yeshua told them this Mashal, What man among you has a hundred sheep, and if one of them should get lost, would he not leave the ninety-nine in the open and go in search of the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he finds it, he rejoices and takes it on his shoulders, and he comes to his house and invites his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that such will be the joy in heaven over one sinner who repents, more than over ninety-nine righteous who need no repentance. Amen. Amen. Baruch Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu tevar met, vechai olam nota betochinu, baruch ata yehua, noten merik hakarasha. Amen. This is a Torah which Moshe placed before the children of Israel. It is in accord with the command of Yahweh by the hand of Moshe. A tree of life it is those who take hold of it, and blessed are the ones who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Long life is in its right hand, in its left are riches and honor. Yahweh was pleased for the sake of his righteousness 
to render the Torah great and glorious. Chazach, Chazach, Venit Hazech. Etz Chaim Hi, Lama Chazikim Ba, Vetom Chea Meushar, Erachea, Darchena. Tivotea Shalom Ashive Nuya Elecha Venashuva Kadesh Kadesh Ambe. Shabbat Shalom. All right. We're in Parsha 33, Bechukotai. So I want to begin today with a summary statement of the very obvious that we read in Scripture this week. And that summary statement is, if Israel will obey to do the chukot, the mitzvot, in the Mishpatim of Elohim, he will bless them in abundance. And if they turn away from him, if we turn away from him, he will bring great and terrible destruction on them until they make Teshuvah, in which case Elohim, for their preservation and restoration, will remember the covenants with Yaakov, Yitzhak, and Avraham. And that's how it's laid out in this Parsha. It does it backwards, not Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. It says it backwards. I'm not going to get into that, but that's just an interesting little tidbit. We might, I think we're going to read that passage later on, but he does mention it backwards. The abundant blessing is clear in verses 1 through 13 of chapter 26, whereas the warnings of destruction or curses are laid out very clearly in verses 14 through 41. With the promise of restoration halfway through verse 40, 41, uh, read through verse 45. Uh, I'm not really going to focus on 27 today. I'm going to largely just kind of hang out in 26. So isn't it incredible how so much hinges on this short uh, verse from Vayikra 26.3. Im bechukotai telechu ve'et mitzvotai tishmeru ve'asitem otam. And that's verse 3. If you walk in my chukot and keep my mitzvot and do them. And so much about what we're going to read hinges on that little verse. So what I really want to do today is highlight each blessing and the curse of Abba's, of Abba's covenant with Israel in the portion. Uh, but first, let's refamiliarize ourselves with the terms chukot, mitzvot, and mishpatim. Does anybody ever kind of forget what they are? I do because Hebrew is not my first language. And so I have to constantly remind myself what's what. Okay, We, we get all three of those terms in this portion. Um, the Devar renders chukot here uh, as bechukotai, uh, which is in my, uh, in my statutes, in my ordinances, uh, in my chukot. Um, 
So a, so the, a chok uh, is a statue, an ordinance, a limit, an enactment, or something that's prescribed. It's a law given without any reason or justification sometimes. A statute or an ordinance are essentially the same thing. They are decrees or requirements or boundaries set by Elohim. They can be civil decrees or enactments from Elohim, um, something that's prescribed for us to do. In, a, in essence, they describe how to live in obedience. Okay? Um, for instance, the statute to not kindle a fire on Shabbat. We're not really told why not to. Uh, but that's a boundary or a limit set of what can't be done. Okay? Or there are statutes regarding like what can and can't be done in a state of uncleanness or uh, women and their monthly cycle. There's certain things that are just, he says, you know, he puts boundaries and limits. Okay? Mitzvot are commandments. That's the easy one to remember of all these, right? The mitzvah, the command. There are orders or charges to be followed or observed. For example, the ten devarim, which are, are they're high-level overviews of what must be done or can't be done. Um, statutes and ordinances can be based off of those. All statutes are a type of command, but not all commands are statutes. It's kind of a hard one to understand. Um, the statutes are all the different ways or the how-tos or the shall-nots of keeping the commands. The mishpat or the mishpatim are uh, judgments. Judgments tell us how to handle situations that arise between each other and between this people. That's how I understand it from scripture. <clears throat> so we've gone, we've, we've rehashed the, the, the hukot, the mitzvot, and the mishpatim, okay? So what we're going to see in the text here is almost a mirror image in regard to the blessings and the corresponding curses, okay? So there's going to be a blessing, and you're almost going to see something very similar, a curse that basically undoes the blessing, in a sense. <clears throat> so the first one I want to look at is uh, what I've read already, verse 3. If you walk in my chukot and keep my mitzvot and do them. And I read the Hebrew, but I'll do it again. Em bechukotai telechu ve'et mitzvotai tismeru be'asitem otam. All right, so, so the word to walk here is telechu, which comes from, anybody know? Halach. Halach, which is where halacha is derived from. Telechu. So to walk in his statutes or commandments means to actively do them. If you're walking, you're active. If you're in his commandments doing them, you are actively doing them. This is why the Shema is so important. We must first hear to be able to do so. So the, the, the opposite side of that, that, that starts past at uh, verse 14, is, but if you will not hearken unto me, and will not do these mitzvot, and if you shall reject my chukot, and if your soul abhors my mishpatim, so that you will not do all my mitzvot, but break my breed. So you can see that's kind of the, the direct mirror opposite of if you walk in my hukot and keep my mitzvot and do them. Okay. 14 in Hebrew is ve'im ve'im lo tishmeu liv velo ta'asu et kal ha-mitzvot ha'ele. What this verse is talking about is it's willfully turning away from Elohim's commands and, and a, re, a complete refusal to walk in or do his ways. Yeah. Tishmeu from Shema means to hear, to listen, or obey. And we read up there, but if you will not hearken, ve'im lo tishmu. In 15 it says, and if you shall reject my hukot, and if your soul abhors my mishpatim, that's uh, it's a very strong word, abhor. Um, 
The Hebrew word here is tim asu, from the root ma'as. And it means to reject or refuse or despise because of utter contempt, disgust or disdain. Um, there's been a lot that I abhor lately just in the news. And I, in the past two weeks, it's been, um, there's been utter contempt from my part from some of the things I'm hearing about what's happening in our country, um, especially in regard to abortion. Um, I, I, you know, you've heard the old statement, you know, if, if, if God doesn't judge us, he's going to have to apologize to Saddam and Amorah. That's how I feel. I, I, you know, we had, I watched a clip of a woman saying, it's okay to kill children when they're two, three, four, five, six years old. It's shocking that it is okay. It's a woman's choice still. I just, I abhor the thought. How, how, you know, how, how, how have we gotten so astray? It's because we will not hearken un, unto him. We will not do all his mitzvot. And we reject his hukot. And our soul abhors his mishpatim. That's how we've gotten here. And it says at the end of 14, but break my breach. That means to willfully dismiss or refuse the terms of Elohim's contract with them. It's a treacherous act of wanting all the blessings without the kadosh responsibilities required in the covenant. It's like wanting to keep your house in your car and not paying the note. Yeah. Might bring the highs down a little bit. All right, let's move on to 26.4. Then I will give your rains in their season, and the land shall yield her produce, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. The rains were critical to the fertility required to miraculously, miraculously support Israel, especially so that the land would produce the abundance in the preparation years before the Shemitah or Yovel years. And we read about that last week in Bihar, how they were supposed to, that Elohim was going to cause the land to produce abundance in the sixth year. They would eat on it the seventh and the eighth into the ninth until their crop came in, right? The other side of that, the mirror, in 19, he says, I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron, and your earth as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her produce, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruit. So do you see the mirror there? Verse 4 with 19. <clears throat> So the pride of your power here, according to Rashi, is their pride in the place where the kavod or the presence of Elohim would dwell, uh, which is the Mishkan or the Beit HaMikdash. And interestingly, let's listen to Rashi's commentary on these verses. He says, uh, this is in reference to the temple, for thus does it state in, Ez in Yehezkel 24.21, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength. So going back to 19 and verse 26, and I will break the pride of your power. So Rashi links that with Yehezkel 2421. He goes on, he says, uh, th talking about the stopping the rain and making their, their heavens as iron, the earth as brass, he says, this threat is even uh, more severe than that of Moshe, because there it says in Devarim 28:23, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be copper, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. And this implies that the heaven will at last exude, uh, at least exude moisture, which will give some humidity, just as the copper exudes moisture, whilst the earth will not exude just as iron does not exude. And so it will keep its fruit in good condition, since it will not be too humid. Here, however, the scripture threatens uh, that the heaven will not exude moisture, just as iron does not exude, and there will therefore be drought in the world, whilst the earth will exude or be too humid, just as copper sweats, and it will consequently make its fruit perish. Whew. That's a mouthful. There's some interesting wisdom there. Um, so verse 30 is also 
the, the other side of the blessing of verse 4. Uh, verse 30 said, And I will destroy your high places and cut down your sun pillars and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. Right? So the, the, the blessing part of this, uh, you know, this section here is that he would give the rains, the land would produce, and the trees of the field would produce. The second mirrored... Uh, uh, the second part of that, the curse scriptures, I will destroy your high places and cut down your sun pillars and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols and my soul shall abhor you. The high places and the sun pillars are the substitutions they would make in place of the Mishkan or the Beit HaMikdash. Indeed. So think about that term, cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. This atrocity is dying in an utter state of indignity and uncleanness. In death, they were to be left exposed and cast upon unclean idols along with other dead. So we're talking about heaps of carcasses to be consumed by wild animals and the natural elements. This in no small way points to the first, first death taking place without the deliverance from the second death. This is the opposite of what we read about in Bereshit 25.8 and 25.17 and 35.29 and 49.29 and 33, where the patriarchs are what? They're gathered to their fathers. Let's see. I had to ask Deacon this morning the, the Hebrew name for um, Ecclesiastes. Kohelet, yes, Kohelet. I forgot to put that down. <laughs> Kohelet 7.1, talking about death, it says, a good name is better than precious oil and the day of death than the day of one's birth. So this is the example, followed with the example of the gath being gathered to your fathers. This is, the, this is the example set for us in death, which is covering, which is being hidden away, dignity and honor and shalom. Not being, not carcasses being cast upon carcasses upon the carcasses of idols, okay? All right, the next blessing, verse 5 of 26. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And you shall eat your bread until you have enough and dwell in your land safely. I really like that part there, dwell in your land safely, that... That speaks to me as a, a father and a husband. So what we're reading here is that there would be plenty of productive work for Yisrael during and between the different sowing, growing, and harvesting seasons so that they could take dominion over Elohim's land that he had given them charge over. Plenty of productive work to be done. This verse also tells us that their lechem would be plentiful. They wouldn't have to worry about there never being enough. Which makes you wonder, do, do you ever get enough as a slave in Mitzrayim? I don't know. You know, there was, there was grumbling about going back for the leeks and the onions and the melons and whatnot, but in that verse in, um, in Numbers, uh, it doesn't mention Lechem in there. <laughs> You shall eat your bread and you shall have enough and dwell in your land in safety. So the opposite side of that is verse 16. And you shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies shall eat it. This is like working the land with no payoff or reward. And in fact, your enemies taking or stealing the fruit of your labors. For us, that would be like a work week with your paycheck going to the worst worker in the company. <laughs> Except worse than that, right? The, 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 that's what we can, you know, that's what makes sense to us in the here and now, but actually what they, what was to come upon them was going to, would be much worse. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to make light of that, but it's hard work not getting, not seeing the fruit of your labors. That's what it's talking about. Sowing your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. 
Another curse to that blessing is in verse 26. It says, when I break your staff of bread, and we read something very similar to that in Psalm 105 this morning. When I break your staff of bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver your bread again by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. So he tells them first in five, you shall eat your bread until you have enough, but if they forget his mitzvot, nope, you shall eat and not be satisfied. This is talking about hunger from lack. A truly fearful place for parents to be in, right? <clears throat> Rashi has some interesting commentary on this. He says, this expression, the staff of your bread, denotes uh, a source of support or similar to the staff of strength uh, that you see in Yirmiyahu 48.17. So the staff of your bread is similar to the staff of strength. It goes on, when I break the staff of your bread, this implies I will break for you every support of food. These are the, quote, arrows of famine alluded to in Yehezkel 5.16. For he continues with exactly the same words, quote, and I will break your staff of bread in Yehezkel. He goes on, and they shall deliver your own bread again by weight. He says this is because the grain will rot and the bread will become crumbly bread. I, I, I forgot to translate the Hebrew there. But he says the bread will rot and become crumbly bread and break into pieces in the oven so that they, the women, will deliberately weigh the pieces in order to divide them between themselves. He comments on the verse, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. This is a special curse that will take effect on the bread already in their stomach. We know that things happen in the stomach sometimes, right? Remember when they would drink the curse? They talked about their thigh would shrivel or waste away. He says, this is a special curse that will take effect on the bread already in their stomach. Thus you have seven punishments alluded to in verse 24. Uh, the attacking armies, the siege, the plague, the destruction of food supply, a lack of wood, uh, Crumble your cursed bread and a curse in the intestines. That's, that's how he reckons it. <laughs> Let's go to the blessing in verse 6. And I will give shalom in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. That is a huge blessing, right? And I will cause evil beasts to cease out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. What a blessing to have shalom in the land with the promise of the absence of war uh, in the land from invaders or thieves or robbers or murderers, right? Abba is promising them complete protection from any known or unknown enemy. And he's promising them protection from dangerous wild animals. I'll read it again. And I will give shalom in the land and you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. And I will cause evil beasts to cease out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. So what's the opposite curse to that in the, in the scripture? It's in verse 16. I also will do this unto you. I will appoint terror over you, even consumption and fever. That shall make the eyes to fail and the soul to languish. And the second part of that. And I will send the beast of the field among you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your ways shall become desolate. So he says, I will appoint terror. That terror is the opposite of shalom. Without shalom in the land, it wouldn't be possible to rest, live without fear, or even have the benefits of basic bodily health, which is he's talking here. He mentions consumption, which is like disease or wasting away. He, uh, Elohim talks about fever here, uh, which is obviously sickness. He mentions uh, the eyes failing, that's blindness. And he talks about the soul languishing. What is that? I would say that is like utter chemical depression. Soul to languish. No hope. No joy. Bereft of anything of the kingdom. He talks about the curse of beasts coming into the field, which shall rob you of your children, destroy your cattle. He says, okay, so, so here is, this is the removal of protection from dangerous wild animals. I've personally never really faced a wild animal in the wild. 
I, I was around some wild boars sometime out in the canyons and in the, in the Texas Panhandle, but I've never really come face to face with one. No lions and tigers or bears. All's been well on that front <laughs> to, up to this point. But here we see him promising to remove the protection from dangerous wild animals. As parents, this is also terrifying, the thought of losing your children to death by wild animals. It makes me think of the distress that Yaakov was put through when his son said he was killed by a wild beast, showing him the bloody robe that, had, that they had torn themselves and doused in lambs or goat's blood. What did that do to Yaakov for the next 15 years, 20 years? That sounds like soul to languish, a languishing soul. So we even get a hint of it in Yaakov's life. That same verse 22 says, I will make you few in number. Think about how serious the threat of being made few in number by wild beasts. That means that a large portion of them are going to be destroyed by wild beasts. That's unthinkable today, right? But he says it right there. I will send the beast of the field among you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy the cattle and make you few in number. The context there is the wild beast, so... The last part of this verse says, and your ways shall become desolate. So how, think about how sad the disappearance of their customs and traditions based on Torah observance. Your ways shall become desolate. Verse 7, back to the blessings. And you shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall chase ten thousand. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Remember, this is if, if they will continue in the covenant. This is the promise for territorial dominance and sovereignty over the land given to them by Elohim. This is also the promise that their military would execute complete victory over their enemies, even in light of small numbers. You know, that being outnumbered. It didn't matter if they were outnumbered in Israel. Imagine going to war and every time knowing that without a doubt that you would overcome and they would be the ones that would fall by the sword right, right. rather than your brethren. Amen. So the, the unfortunate other side of that verse from 7 is 17. And I will set my face against you. And you shall be smitten before your enemies. They that hate you shall rule over you, and you shall flee when none pursues you. This is fearful because Elohim is telling them that he will be completely opposed to their well-being in every way. Set my face against you. Even to the point that their enemies, those that hate them, would become their rulers. Setting my face against you. Think about the glory that Moshe exuded when Elohim's face was before him. Yeah. It was so strong that he had to cover his face. As I was thinking about that passage this week, I was like, hmm, Talit, Talit. He must have put a Talit of some sort over his head. <laughs> a covering, right? It's too much for all of Israel to bear because of the glory, the kavod that was on him. After he had met with Elohim, Panim al Panim, right? But the curse is the curse here is I will set my face against you, not be face to face with you. <laughs> the other part of that curse is twenty five. I will bring a sword upon you that shall execute the vengeance of the Brit, and you shall be gathered together within your cities, and I will send the pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. So this is not 100 chasing 10,000, you know. This verse highlights the fact that Elohim would allow the sword or death through their enemies to be the instrument of judgment of the covenant between Israel and Elohim. And 36, all, verse 36 also piggybacks off of 17 and 25 
uh, as a, in, in opposition to 7. 36 says, And as for them that are left of you, I will send a faintness into their heart in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a driven leaf shall chase them. I, the plan was for, you know, 100 to chase 10,000. He's saying here, the sound of a driven leaf shall chase them. And they shall flee as one flees from the sword, and they shall fall when none pursues. And they shall stumble one upon another, as it were before the sword, when none pursues. And you shall have no power to stand before your enemies. And you shall perish among the nations, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in, the, in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. That doesn't sound like... I mean, that's his face set upon uh, against him again, right? Again, we see here that Abba allows them to implode as a Kadosh nation. They're driven away from the land to perish and pine away in the sinfulness of the nations to which they've dri they're driven. Yeah, it's happened. Let's go to the next blessing. Verse 9. And I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and will establish my breed with you. Abba is telling them here that they would have the complete respect of all the nations and that they would become overwhelmingly numerous. As he promised Avraham that they would be a what? A great nation. nation. And his seed would be like the stars in the sky. Right? That was the promise. That was one of his, part of his covenant with Avraham. He says, and will establish my breed with you. Establishing here means that he would continue to renew his covenant with them, generation after generation, if they would continue to love him by keeping his Torah. I've highlighted verse 22 already, but it's also pertinent here in respect to verse 9. And I will send the beast of the field among you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle, and make you few in number. Here he says he's going to make them fruitful and multiply you. But the, the other side of not keeping the covenant is making you few in number. All right, let's look at the uh, seventh, seventh blessing. Verse 10. And you shall eat old store long kept, and you shall bring forth the old from before the new. So this is another promise that Abba would provide the abundance necessary to get them through the Shemitah and Yovel years. Um, like, like I said before, we looked at in Bihar uh, last week. Elohim was going to make possible the, the miraculous preservation of harvested and stored food. I would love to not have to go to H-E-B every week. That place is a madhouse. It's a madhouse. <laughs> All right, the other, the curse side to that blessing in 10 is verse 29 and you shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters shall you eat so he tells them you're going to, no, he says the blessing is you shall eat the old store long kept and you shall bring forth the old from before the new, the curse side is you're going to eat the flesh of your sons and your daughters this is some of the most troubling language of all the scripture but look what becomes their food the source of their sustenance their children, who should become their sustenance and support in old age, become the abominable element that merely satiates their hunger. When in, in truth, there's no way human flesh could ever nourish another human. It was never meant to be that way. What is so distressing to me about this passage is that Abba had promised to provide for them the abundance of the land, with even the poor among them able to enjoy the bounty of Elohim's blessing. If you remember, um, Scripture tells us that the edges of the field and the vineyards aren't to be gleaned, or to be harvested. It's so that the poor amongst them can go and glean for themselves. So he had even provision in mind for those that were poor. Merciful, kind. So when we were reading this, that verse this week in our family in Torah time, um, 
Avi could barely take hearing it. He was holding his hands up, petitioning me not to read. You know, wanted me to stop. He didn't want he did not want me to teach the weight and the fulfillment of this verse. He's holding up his right hand. Stop. Trying to cover his hands with his his ears with his hands. The reason I bring that up is because he understood the horror of what Elohim was saying here. Even if the content of the Devar is unpleasant, this is why it is so critical to teach this to your children. It's because they can and do understand the weight of Elohim's word. Let's look at the eighth blessing here in verse 11. And I will set my Mishkan among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you and be your Elohim, and you shall be my people. I am Yehovah, your Elohim, who brought you forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, that you should not be their servants, and I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you go upright. I will set my Mishkan among you. My soul shall not abhor you. I will walk among you. I was trying to think, like, what to write about the how, what, what do I bring forth from this? You know, it's there's really nothing I can say to do justice to this passage. Those few lines, it's, it's, I can't. I hope it happens soon for us and for all of Israel and us as part of Israel. This is talking about the very palpable presence of Elohim dwelling amongst his people, who he has made a nation, having taken them out of slavery and cruel bondage and promising to walk amongst them. Made you go upright. That's talking about walking in the freedom, in righteousness, whereas they were formerly slaves, with yokes on their back, now he was going to allow them to be upright. And the walking among the part sounds a lot like Gan Eden. Walk him, he, walks, he was walking in the cool of the garden, in the day, cool of the day in the garden. That was his plan then. That's what he wanted to do with his creation. That's what he's going to do one day. The curse side of verse 11 is 31, and it says, I will make your cities a waste and will bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will not smell the savior, the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies that dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And you will... And you will I scatter among the nations, and I will draw out the sword after you. And your land shall be a desolation, and your city shall be a waste. How could Elohim walk amongst his people when their cities are a waste? How could he dwell among them when their sanctuaries, plural, uh, meaning the Mishkan, and the, um, the Beit HaMikdash of Shlomo, and uh, the Beit HaMikdash that was built up to the return from Bavel, those were destroyed. Um, the second one was destroyed by Rome, who Yehuda calls Edom, by the way. Edom. Yehuda calls Rome a dome. Do some study on that. You'll, you'll be amazed at uh, their understanding of, of Rome and Edom. So there wouldn't be a place for him to dwell because he was going to allow his sanctuaries to be uh, made desolate. Gone would be the days of the, sacrific the sacrificial system providing for a savory aroma to Elohim which was his institution to cover their sins from sacrifice to sacrifice, from Yom Kippur to Yom Kippur. Their cities, their land, their sanctuaries, what was purposed for beauty and set apartness to Elohim would now be purposed for death, destruction, and diaspora to the point that even their enemies would go about in astonishment at the wrath that they could observe in the land. And why all this horror? Verse 34 kind of wraps it up. Why? Um, and and I, think, I think a lot of chapter 25 feeds into this as well about doing right to your neighbor, just weights and measures, um, not exacting interest on your neighbor, letting, letting the, the slave go um, in the Yovel, forgiving debts. 
But, but really, this passage is kind of summed up here. It says in verse 34, 20, 26, 34, Then shall the land be paid her Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate and you are in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rest and repay her Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate, it shall have rest, even the rest which it had not in your Sabbaths when you dwelt upon it. So the land was due its Sabbaths. Not only was rest for man determined, but rest for the land. If you remember in uh, Parsha Behar from last week, this is the land that Abba said was his. In Vayikra 25.23 it says, And the land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and settlers with me. I know that we're not in the land, but hearing how seriously Elohim takes rest for man and rest for the land, how should we respond? I think it would do us all good to, in the next couple of days, study Yeshayahu 56 and 58 to remember how serious the Shabbat is to Elohim. And not just like read over it, gloss over it, take it line by line, verse by verse, precept upon precept, because he says some pretty powerful things about the Shabbat in those two chapters. So is this where he leaves his people? In destruction, in diaspora, with no covenant to guard? Absolutely not. What profanity does not leave them to themselves? Because he remembers his covenant with the forefathers. Verse 40. And we should rejoice over this. And they shall confess their iniquity. What does that sound like? Teshuv. Right on. And the iniquity of their fathers, and their treachery which they committed against me, and also that they have walked contrary unto me. We've done the exact same thing. Maybe even worse. I also will walk contrary unto them, and bring them into the land of their enemies. If then perchance their uncircumcised heart is humbled, and they then be paid the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my breach with Yaakov, and my breach with Yitzhak, and also my breach with Avraham, will I remember. That's, the, that's where he lists it backwards. To me, that's, I need to study that more. There's, I know there's something to it. I just I didn't have the time to get into that, but really interesting. Um, middle of verse 42, and I will remember the land. <clears throat> End of verse 42. I will remember the land, his land. He hasn't forgotten it. He wants to do blessing unto the land. It's coming. It's going to be done. For the land shall lie forsaken without them, and shall be paid her Sabbaths, while she lies desolate without them, and they shall be paid the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they rejected my mishpatim, and their soul abhorred my hukot, and yet for all that, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly. And to break my breed with them. For I am Yehovah their Elohim. What if he would allow what if he would have allowed them to, to be utterly destroyed? Not one Yehudi left. That would have made Elohim a liar. Verse forty five But I will for their sakes remember the breed of their ancestors. I mean whom I brought forth out of the land of Mitzrayim in the sight of the nations, that I might be their Elohim, I am Yahweh. These are the Chukot and the Mishpatim instructions which Yahweh made between him and B'nai Israel in Har Sinai by the hand of Moshe. So in closing today, I'd like to read again by Yikra 26.3 and contrast that with the words of our rabbi, our great one, Yeshua, from Yochanan 14. By Yikra 26.3 If you walk in my chukot and keep my mitzvot and do them. Yochanan 14.15 If you love me, keep my mitzvot. Shabbat shalom.
Turn your citrine to page 67. Alenu le shabak la don hako la tet gedula lotzer bershit. Page 68. It is our duty to praise the Master of all, to ascribe greatness to the molder of creation, for he has not made us like the nations of the lands and has not placed us like families of the earth. He has not assigned our portion like theirs, nor our fate like all their crowds. For they bow down to vanity and emptiness and pray to a God who does not save. But we kneel and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the King who reigns over kings, the Holy One. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth. The seat of his glory is in the heavens above, and his powerful presence is in the loftiest heights. He is our Elohim, and there is none other. True is our King. There is nothing beside him. As it is written in his Torah, you shall know today and take it back to your heart that Yahweh is the only Elohim in heaven above and on earth below. There is none other. And it is said, Yahweh will be king over all the world. On that day, Yahweh will be one and his name will be one. Let them praise the name of Yahweh, for his name alone shall be honored. Hodo al Eretz Veshemaim Beyeren Keren Leamo Tehila Lechal Hazidav Livne Yisrael Am Krovo Hallelujah. His majesty is above earth and heaven, and he will raise the status of his people and cause praise for all his devoted ones, for the children of Israel, a people close to him. Praise Yah. Uvnocho Yomar, Shuva Yawa, Revot al Fe Yisrael, Kuma Yawa, Lemunatecha, Ata Veron Uzecha, Kehonecha Yerzutzedek, Bechasidecha Yerananu, Baruv David Abdecha, Al Tashev Peni Meshikecha, Ki Lekaktov Nati, Lachem Torati, Al Ta'azovu. And when the ark rested, Moshe would say, Return, O Yawa, to the myriads of Israel. Arise, O Yawa, to your resting place. You and your ark of strength, clothe your priests with righteousness. May your devout ones shout for joy. For the sake of your servant David, do not turn your face from your anointed. I give you good instruction. Do not forsake my Torah. Baruch Ata Yawa Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Hadavar Chachai BeMashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, O Yawa Elohim, who has given us the living word in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Eva Rekka Yawa Bayish Marecha Yar Yawa Panabalecha Buchunecha Isa Yawa Panabalecha Bayasim Lecha Shalom May Yawa bless you and keep you. May Yawa make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yawa lift up his countenance upon you and establish for you. Shalom. Bashem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen.
There's yard eggs in the fridge, about 30 of them. Please take them home. <laughs>